Good morning. Surely want to greet you all today in the matchless name of Jesus. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, and that means wherever you are, it is the house of the Lord. As one of our members um, in the text said, made a statement which was so poignant, she says the churches are closed, but the temples are open. And you and I are the temples of the living Christ. And so this morning on today, as we gather across this nation and across this world to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, I surely trust and pray that this moment together, as we share together, will be a blessing to you, will be an encouragement to your heart, and will give us strength for the journey ahead. On today, I would like to speak to you as a, a word that the Lord has laid upon my heart. And if I should capture this time together, it would simply be entitled, Between the Cross and COVID-19. Be Between the Cross and COVID-19. Now, I'd like to direct your thoughts as we turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. And I'm going to be looking at the first 10 verses. Now, after the Sabbath... As the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and, be and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held them by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Then I'll pick up on verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations." baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. As we bow our hearts in prayer, Father, we humbly bow our hearts before you today, grateful for your mercies and grateful for your presence. Even in these difficult times, as the world comes to a standstill. God, we may be sequestered in our homes because of COVID-19 and the restrictions of social distancing. But even though we may not be able to gather in the church house as we always um, anticipate, yet we can always come together for your words remind us we're two or three are gathered in anything concerning your name you promise to be in the midst to bless and do good so I pray father that you may hide me behind the cross and that God you speak a word a timely word which will bring encouragement which will bring hope to your children and all of God's people say amen 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 between the cross and COVID-19 New words are a fact of life for a living language, and taking careful stock of the words that we use is an important part of the work of dictionary editors. Words can come and go in a language, but those that show staying power and increasing use need to be recorded and described. In other words, they need definitions. 
So in 2019, the latest batch of updates, which included over 500 new words and new meanings, were added to the Webster Dictionary. We see a cross-section of newly established vocabulary ranging from the serious to the playful, from the technical to the informal, with a bit of everything in between. Languages are not stagnant. They don't remain the same forever. They're constantly developing and changing. Have you ever experienced expectation? According to the Urban Dictionary, that's the anticipation one feels when waiting for a response to a text message. This new word, expectation, is an example of a blend. Blending is just one of the many ways that new words enter into the English language and more new words are being invented constantly. English words come from several different sources. They develop naturally over the course of centuries from ancestral languages. They're also borrowed from other languages, and we create many of them by various means of word formation. A few months ago, many of us had never heard the word or the acronym COVID-19. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Chinese authorities identified an outbreak caused by a novel coronavirus. The virus can cause mild to severe respiratory illness. The outbreak began in Wuhan in the Hubei province in China around December 2019 and has spread to a growing number of other countries, even including the United States. The virus is different from six other previously identified human coronavirus, including SARS and other forms. According to the World Health Organization, th th there is literally a global outbreak of this pandemic. On March 13, 2020, the President of the United States declared COVID-19 outbreak a national emergency. The virus that causes COVID-19 seems to be spreading in the community. Community spread means people have been infected with the virus in an area, including some who are not sure how or where they became infected. You see, COVID-19 is an acronym that stands for Coronavirus Disease of 2019. As of on April 9th, uh, that's just on April 9th, 2020, there have been 429,052 coronavirus cases and 14,695 deaths. That's the, the highest number of cases in the world. Now, on April 9th, on the 9th of April, New York City had 7,521 new coronavirus cases, and on the same day, 518 deaths. This brings the city's total to 87,725 cases and 4,778 deaths. This case total doesn't reflect the number of active cases, but rather the total number of people infected since the start of the pandemic. That means, according to the official stats, New York City alone now has had more infected patients than the whole of China, which has reported 81,907 cases. The coronavirus or COVID-19, is a part of a pattern of increasingly frequent epidemics that have coincided with globalization, urbanization, and climate change. As society becomes more connected, collaboration and cooperation would be needed to reduce the impact of future epidemics. As coronavirus spreads, so does the sobering reality that epidemics will become more common with our increasing connected age. In our global society, 
outbreaks of infectious diseases can move from a remote village to a major city on the other side of the world in under 36 hours. It is ironic that COVID-19 crossed our borders early this year and for the past months have apprehended this country and the world. We have been strongly encouraged to work from home, to wash our hands regularly and thoroughly, to sneeze in our elbows, to practice social distancing. Schools have transformed academic instruction online and first there were strict restrictions on assembling from, um, we, we, we started where they allowed 100, then 50, then down to 20, and now 10. It was stated that this would be the most painful week with an alarmist spike in deaths. But this dark period ushers us into the brightest of human hopes when the Jews celebrate Passover and Christians celebrate Passion or Holy Week. Oh, my friends, even as we celebrated Good Friday just a couple of days ago, yes, we celebrated it online. And yes, we reflected on the fact Jesus Christ suffered for our sins. We reflect on the fact that he was forced to carry his cross. He was naked upon that cross but my God today is resurrection Sunday a reminder to us he's not on the grave he's not on the cross he's not in the grave no my friends we serve a risen Savior somebody should get excited about that my God even though we may not be in the church house even though we may not have the worship team leading out the worship even though we may not have the band even though we may not have all the things that we are so accustomed Custom. Just thinking of the fact that Jesus is alive should bring a smile to your face. It should bring joy to your heart. And wherever you may be today, wherever you may be right now watching this video, my God, you and I have a blessed hope that Jesus Christ is alive. Somebody ought to give God praise. You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not only the cornerstone of our faith, it is the capstone. It is the very anchor of Christianity. If you remove this capstone from the arches of our face, Christianity would crumble into an empty philosophy. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 17, If Christ be not raised, then your faith is in vain, and you are yet in your sins. If the resurrection is not a fact, then our faith is mere superstition. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 21, he said, from since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. I don't need to argue about the resurrection this morning because the lives and deaths of the apostles and the disciples of Jesus Christ cry out loudly and clearly that Jesus is alive. See, the first Easter Sunday began with the humble woman, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, when they rose early in the morning and made their way to the cemetery. The Bible tells me that as they made their way to the cemetery, the thing which was uppermost on their minds who would roll away the stone but my God when they got to the graveside somehow the very thing that they had worried about had already been taken care of because the stone had been rolled away my God and there an angel was able to remind them that he is not here my God the scripture we, we go all the way back and even you see because the graphic portrayal of Christ's unspeakable suffering by the crucifixion you can see it in Psalm 22 when the scripture prophesies that he will cry in his heart that I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint my heart is like wax it is melted in the midst of my bowels his victorious resurrection is intimated in the very first prophecy of the Bible in Genesis chapter 3 and 15 there God told Adam and Eve that although the old serpent Satan would bruise the heel of the coming seed of the woman. The divine seed would ultimately be victorious and crush the head of the wicked one. 
See, what happens is that all through the ages, there have been a confirmation that Jesus is coming, would bring a defeat to death, would bring a defeat to the power of sin. My God, we even in the Job was able to remind us that he would come and he would destroy the power of death. He says, because I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And he says, go out to my skin. Worms destroy this body. He says, yet in my flesh shall I see God. My God, the story of Abraham and Isaac also gave a reference in Hebrews chapter 11 when the Bible says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac, his only begotten son, according that God was knowing that God was able to raise him from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure my God, all of these references pointed to Jesus' coming. Yet he could have, and he should have, you see, we all, when we look in the history, recognize them, even as the, the, the woman appeared upon the tomb, upon, and so recognizing and having that experience with the angel, we can see a few nuggets. We can get some nuggets out of this passage, because first we want to look at the miracle of the resurrection. In verse 1 and 4, it says, After the Sabbath, as it began to dawn to the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene on the other Mary, they came to look at the grave, and behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. He came and rolled away the stone, and notice, he sat upon it. My God, and so we notice that out of death came life, that the resurrection is a great miraculous confirmation of the power of God to defeat death. You and I may be afraid of death today, but Jesus Christ already did defeated death on our behalf. So Jesus rose triumphant over death. And so for the proof of Christ's resurrection, we have the testimony of the angel. We have the testimony of the, wo the woman who was experienced the, the empty tomb. And we also have the testimony of Jesus. But we also see, if we pause for a moment and look at these human witnesses, because when the woman came to the sepulchre, the Bible says in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, See, what happens is he rose the third day after his death. That was the time which he had often pre prefixed, and he kept within it. He was buried in the evening of the sixth day of the week and rose in the morning of the first day of the following week so that he lay in the grave about 36 or 38 hours. He rose after the Jewish Sabbath, and it was the Passover Sabbath. All that day he laid in the grave to signify the abolishing of the Jewish Jewish feasts and the other parts of the ceremonial laws. Yet he rose upon the first day of the week. The Bible says on the first day of the week, God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. On this day, therefore, my friends, he rose triumphantly from the grave. Jesus rose about when the day was just about to dawn. Because then the day spring from on high did again visit us. He rose and it began to dawn as soon as it could be said that the third day was come. But it was there Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the same that attended the funeral, they sat over against the sepulchre. As before, they sat over against the cross. Still they sat there, wondering in their minds, how could they offer ministry to Jesus' body, even in the place of death? No mention is made of his mother would have been there. But here's what happens. As Christ in the grave was beloved of the saints, so the saints in the grave are believed, beloved of Christ. For death in the grave cannot slacken the bond of love which is between them. And so these women went to show their goodwill by visiting the cemetery. And it was there they encountered the angel. It was again a reminder because the angel reminded him. He says when he died, the earth was received him, shook for fear. Now that he arose, the earth shook in rejoicing. It was a signal of Christ's victory. 
See what happens, friends. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven. And God removed that stone from the grave. And so as these women appeared in the cemetery to offer ministry to Christ, the angel said, he is not here. He is risen. Notice, just as he said, something about the word of God. When God says he's going to do something, you can bank upon it. You can trust the word of God. The angel says, he's not here, just as he said. And then they go further. They say, look, the grave is empty. And so we see the resurrection, not only the miracle of the resurrection, but we see the message of the resurrection. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. But the, the angel says, now see the place where he was laying. Go quickly and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. He, the, the angel encourages these women in their darkest moments. Do not be afraid. See, fear has a way of taking over your life. Now, when you listen to the news and you hear of the cases of those who are proven or tested positive or of those who pass, fear has a way of just taking over your mind. And, and, and fear is a reasonable response to a threat. But as a child of God, you can see what's happening around you, but don't allow the spirit of fear to take over your life. Because the Bible says he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. And so the beautiful message of the resurrection is that oh, the fear of death is defeated. But it is also a, a reassurance because he reassures them of the resurrection of Christ. He says well, you're not serving a savior who is in the grave. Your savior is risen just as he said. But he also says it is a confirmation of their faith. He says remember when he told you just like Jonah, who was three days in the belly of the whale, he says, this body, just like the temple that will be destroyed, he says, they're going to kill me. He says, this body is going to be broken. But notice what happens, that the grave is not the end. The crucifixion is not the end. The power, the message of resurrection is that Jesus Christ has defeated death on our behalf. And he is now alive forevermore. And so we can also see the manifestation of the resurrection. Because the Bible says, they departed with fear and great joy not only had they encountered the angel but the angel told them to go ahead and tell the disciples that Jesus wants to meet with them in Galilee no I, I, I do not get caught up in the debate about the role or the place of woman in ministry because if we're going to go to the scripture the very first witnesses to the resurrected savior were women and here's what happens these women who went to the the cemetery not expecting to see a risen savior they not only encountered the risen lord but they were commissioned to go tell the disciples that jesus wants to meet you in Galilee. it's amazing my friends that it doesn't matter where you stand in society it doesn't matter who may look down at you it doesn't matter who may try to restrict you it doesn't matter who may try to marginalize you if god has a plan for your life he will find you where you are if oh the right the scripture says promotion doesn't come from the east nor from the west promotion comes from God and I want to say to somebody today where it doesn't matter what's going on in your life it doesn't matter who has pushed you to the side and who has told you you have no hope the manifestation of the resurrection is that if God has a plan for your life nobody can stop the plan that God has for you it doesn't matter your race your ethnicity my God God has a way of calling out those whom he has chosen 
And so we see that these little women bringing the good news of a risen Savior to the disciples. And so notice what happens. We find the manifestation of the resurrection is that as they are leaving the cemetery, they encounter Jesus. They had a personal experience. Oh my God, it is sometimes hard to explain to somebody what it means to serve the Lord. Because you see what happens. You can't touch him. You can't, you, you can't measure him. You can't step apart and try to put him within the, sen the five senses of your human experience. My God, you got to feel his presence on the inside. And you know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ lives on the inside. Somebody ought to give God praise today. We also see he gives them the mandate of the resurrection because he says, I want you to go and tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee and notice what happens is that as they prepare to meet him in Galilee, He says to his disciples, he says, I am sending you as ambassadors. We live in a world that oftentimes elevate human beings because of the grace of God upon their lives. You see, we, we get caught up in titles. And it is amazing how sometimes... If you approach some people and you don't use their titles, they become offended. But it's not your title, my friends, because every one of us, whether you're a bishop, a prophet, or whatever, or whatever uh, title you may use or it may be applied to you, the truth is every one of us who have experienced Jesus Christ as our personal Savior in the full pardon of our sins, we are ambassadors of a different country. We are ambassadors of a different kingdom. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. It means that wherever we are, we have have help not only within our natural but we have help of a different kingdom because we are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ and so he commissioned his disciples he says go he into all the world my God, out of COVID-19, we have seen the world come to a standstill. My God, it doesn't matter what part of the world you are. Every time you turn on the news, all you hear about is COVID-19. I, I, I can't imagine what news we are overlooking right now just because COVID-19 has taken over the airwaves. But every country across this globe, to some degree, has been impacted by COVID-19. But here's the great commission to the church, not only to the preachers, not only to the evangelists, not only to the bishops, not only to the, the apostles, but even if you are just a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You may not have any religious or ecclesiastical titles, but if you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and you know Jesus Christ as your personal savior you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ and so he says you are commissioned to bring the gospel which means good news the gospel my friends is still good news because it meant Jesus Christ came to this earth took on the form of a man he died for fallen humanity now we no longer have to offer a sacrifice of a lamb or a bullock no my friends Jesus Christ offered himself a sacrifice once and for all and all we have to do is to put our faith and confidence in Jesus Christ and so he commissioned the disciples he said, go he into all the world. The gospel 
It's not just about one people group. The gospel is not just about one country. The gospel is, a good, is the good news of salvation to the whole world. My God, it is not the desire of God that any should perish. It's not God's desire that any should fall into condemnation. He sent his son to die for our sins. And he says, go into all the world. And teach them to observe all things. That means what we see in the scripture, we teach it. Oh my God, it is so important for us to recognize the scope of ministry. I am proud to be born in the island of Jamaica. But notice what happens. The ministry that God has given us is larger than just a nationality. It's larger than just a race. I know sometimes we have to grapple with issues of social justice. And sometimes we have to grapple with issues. I mean, the, the reality, just looking at the numbers, it is reported that the, 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 the black American and the Hispanic community have been impacted even on a greater level because of COVID-19. Because, because even within the health care system, system. There are so many disparities. And yes, there's a time when we have to come to the table and we have to talk about social justice. There are times we have to come to the table and talk about how can we make society more equitable. But I've come to say to somebody today, our agenda is bigger than just a minority cause. Our agenda is bigger than just living here and who can have more equity. The agenda is that we want to see God's will established upon this earth and that men everywhere regardless of their race or nationality be saved and so he instructed them to teach them all things baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and he says and lo I am with you always it breaks my heart when we hear the news, you know, when, when the coronavirus was ravaging the village of Wuhan in China, we heard, we saw it on the news, but in truth, it was their problem. And so we prayed, oh God, have mercy. And we saw how it ravaged even the city of Milan in Italy. And it was across the waters. And we say, Lord, have mercy. But in truth, we didn't feel the heart pain because we didn't know the people who were affected. But once it crossed into our country, and then once it moved into our neighborhood, and you cannot imagine what it is like to live and to minister and to serve the community right here in New York City. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, there's no other place I would rather be right now than to be right here trying to make a difference, trying to be a witness for God. Oh, my God has given us the grace that even during this season of COVID-19, the Hope Center continues to feed the hungry continues to distribute food on a weekly basis just yesterday some faithful volunteers were still out at the home center what were they doing they they had to practice um, social distancing but they would pack the bags uh, and they would hand them out uh, to these hungry people oh my god although we are located in the epicenter of COVID-19 in the USA I'm here to say to the world there is still a God God, who is doing his work right here in New York City. We are not hopeless. We are not in fear. We are standing upon the word of the Lord because we believe that between the cross and COVID-19, something happened. 
It's called the resurrection. And the resurrection power somehow lifts every dreary situation. It, it gives a grace. It brings light in every dark corner. Wherever you and I may face it. Even if it's not COVID-19. Just know this. That between the cross and your situation. There is the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And so I have a message for COVID-19 today. You may have taken us unprepared and you may have invaded our lives and disrupted our routines. You may have taken our friends and loved ones, but you can never take away our hope. You may ask, how can I have such confidence? Oh my God, I hear, I, I'm happy you ask. Because between the cross and COVID-19 is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, I'm here to say to somebody, it's the resurrection that makes the difference. It's the resurrection that gives hope. It's the resurrection that puts a pep in your step. It is the resurrection that gives you energy when you feel like giving up. It's the resurrection that when you feel depressed and you feel like going under the covers. It's the resurrection power that gives you the grace to jump out of bed, get a shower, look out in the sky and say this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, COVID-19 is not the end between the cross and COVID-19 is still resurrection power. Somebody ought to give God a praise offering. But can I just pause and because there's a theological reality that we can draw from COVID-19. Because I saw an article a couple of days ago that just caught my attention. It simply says, blood from recovered COVID-19 patients is a key resource for scientists. You see, when a new virus appears and it starts infecting people, one critical asset in the fight against this new threat is blood from people who were sick and then recovered. These blood samples help scientists understand how the immune system responds to it and can help us in the search for therapies to treat the disease. That's why some days ago, the Vaccine Research Center at the National Institute of Health put out a call looking for blood donations from people who had COVID-19 and are now healthy. You see, the analysis of the blood samples give researchers information about if and how people develop protective antibodies after an infection. The immune system usually produces antibodies which can bind to and de deactivate the viruses during and after a viral infection. Those antibodies provide an infected person a level of protection from the virus in the future. And they are unlikely to be infected again because their bodies, new antibodies, will stop the virus. You see, scientists may suggest they understand how strong the immune response to a novel coronavirus infection is and how well that response protects people against the virus in the future. See, the long-term research on SARS, for example, <coughs> shows that the protective immune cells were no longer present in some people six years after they were sick. The preliminary research on COVID-19 patients seems to suggest that they do not produce, that they do produce high levels of antibodies, which virologists say is a sign people won't get sick from the virus a second time. Well, there was a virus more powerful than COVID-19. It is called sin. And after Adam's sin, the rest of humanity was exposed and became carriers. David himself said in Psalm 51 and 5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Well, we all were infected with the virus called sin. But God, who is rich in mercy, sent his only begotten son, 
An angel couldn't stop the virus. The patriots couldn't stop the virus. But Jesus stood up. He said, Father, make me a body and I will go down and redeem fallen humanity. The Bible said he was born in a manger. He went about doing good. He fed the hungry. He visited the destitute. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. He was forsaken. He was denied. He was betrayed. Oh my God. He was, he, 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 they dragged him before Pilate. They whipped his back, placed a crown of thorns upon his head. They nailed him to an old rugged cross and they pierced his side. They mocked and cheered him and proclaimed him king of the Jews. But oh friends, he cried, it is finished. Man's redemption is paid. He gave up the ghost. They took him and they placed him in a borrowed tomb. His enemies rejoiced and the world was covered in darkness. It seems the only remedy for the virus of sin was defeated. Soldiers God at the tomb and his followers hid themselves in fear he descended first into the lower parts of the earth and scripture said he that descended is the same also that ascended afar above all heavens it also said of him that his soul was not left in hell and neither did his flesh see corruption. Death could not defeat him and the grave couldn't hold him. But early Sunday morning, just when it seems the sun wouldn't shine anymore, the only antibiotic that could defeat the virus of sin rose from the grave and he cried, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of the grave. My God, he's all right. He's all right. He's the one who has the answer to whatever tragedy may cripple your life. Because between the cross and COVID-19 is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The pivotal event upon which we can all stand and say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds tomorrow. And I know, here's what happens, friends. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know how long we're going to be sequestered at home. But one thing I do know, he knows, and he already has it under control. I want us to bow our heads, and if you find yourself in a place where the fear and uncertainty of tomorrow has crippled your life, I have good news for you today. We serve a risen Savior who has already provided the antibiotic that heals the worst virus the world has ever known going all the way back to Adam and Eve. Because he lives... I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future. My life is worse than living just because he lives. Today, I want to encourage your heart. Between the cross and COVID-19 is the resurrection of Jesus. And if you have listened to these words of mine, and God has spoken to your spirit, and you are not where you should be in your walk with the Lord, this is not a word to condemn you. This is a word to encourage you. <clears throat> the Bible says all have sinned and come short of God's glory. But when you and I come 
in penitence to the Lord and ask him to forgive us, he hears our cry. And if you have listened to this presentation and you know that should Jesus Christ put in his appearance today, you would not be ready to see his face. I want to lead you in the sinner's prayer. Would you pray after me? Lord Jesus, I come humbly at the foot of the cross, sorrowful for my sins. I thank you, O oh God, that you loved me in spite of my failures. And you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. And because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, I can have a blessed hope. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and take your rightful place upon the throne of my heart. I surrender my heart to you. Now, O oh Lord, live through me and make me a witness even to this world around me. If you have prayed this prayer, we invite you to call our church offices at 718-385-1043. And maybe you're a stranger to this ministry. Maybe you're watching this presentation from somewhere outside the country or even out of the city. And you'd like to express some way how this ministry has been a blessing to you. We do invite your response. We love to hear from our friends, even away out who are residing out of town. This ministry is meant for one purpose, and that is to give God, to exalt the name of Jesus, and to give him glory. There's no copyright. You can share it with ever, whoever you wish, because our heart's desire is that the whole world may come to Jesus. And so if you want to send us a note on, on Facebook or you want to call the church offices, we would love to hear from you. And we pray that this ministry continues to be a blessing to you. And if you are on the line and you're struggling with sickness, you're struggling probably even with the symptoms of COVID-19. You may be facing some crisis. I want to agree with you in prayer. The word of the Lord reminds us where two or three are gathered in anything concerning his name. He says, I'm right in the midst of bless and do good. I want to pray with you. And so would you just bow your heads with me, Father? You know the needs of your children. You're the God who loves to hear your children cry to you. God, we confess that we are totally dependent upon you. And so even in this global crisis, I pray for that person who may be battling illness. And it may not have anything to do with COVID-19. They may be battling with pre-existing conditions. But you are still the healer who is able to heal and deliver. And so, Father, we agree in prayer for divine healing on their behalf. For that person who is battling a family crisis, maybe domestic violence, whatever the issue may be, God the needs may be far in range, but you have the power to touch them all. And so we agree on the behalf of your children. We celebrate your faithfulness. We thank you for your intervention. And Father, we want to give you the glory. You said, if you would lift me up from this earth, you said, I will draw all men unto me. And so Father, may you be glorified in everything that we do or say. In Jesus' name, I pray. Trust and pray that this ministry has been a blessing to you. And I pray that God continue to bless you as you live in the reality that between the cross and COVID-19 is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace, both now and forevermore. And all of God's people say, Amen. Happy Resurrection Morning. God bless you. From the Church of God of East Bush. this is Bishop R.C. Hugh Nelson. In Jesus' name.